Hello everyone. Today we will be discussing peptide tag. There are number of peptide tags that you can use for protein purification. We will cover most of the tags in our future future videos. Here I will be discussing his tag. So this is the topic of today's video, which is histidine tag, or it is also known as his tag. And then this is under the big umbrella of the topic which is peptide tag so to purify protein you can use histidine tag and what is that basically 6 to 12 histidines you can you can incorporate into your proteins either in the c terminal or in the n terminal and purify your protein of interest the important thing in this case is this is the most commonly used tag in protein purification how it works it works by the ability of the histidine amino acid to bind specifically to the nicoline or the cobalt ions. And once you have these ions immob Im immobilized on the regions, basically you can flow through your protein, proteins is going to bind to that particular region, and then using uh, eluting agent like imidazole or low pH, you can dissociate that and then purify your protein from the mixture of the protein proteins so basically you can use histidine tag in the c terminal or you can also use the histidine tag uh, on the n terminal side now what are the different systems that you can use system means what are the the cells that you can use specifically with the histidine tag you can use bacterial cells for example e coli cells you can use yeast sectomyces you can use mammalian cell lines there are a number of cell lines that you can use you can also use insect cell lines so this is the most common as i have already told you that this is the most commonly used peptide tag to purify proteins now here as i have indicated already that you can use e coli cells you can use yeast saccharomyces cells you can use mammalian cell lines hek 293 cell lines you can use insect cell lines and uh, these are going to give you good results if you are purifying your protein using histidine tag now how it works let's let's take the example of e coli cells now e coli cells will work with the specific uh, plasmid which are basically the vectors where your gene of interest is is there you can use specific tag either you can incorporate the tag into the protein or you can use uh, plasmids its own uh, histidine tag anyways what you will have is once the protein is translated you will have the histidine tagged to your protein of interest depending upon how many histidines you want so it will be the genetic code for these 6 to 12 amino acids specifically of the histidine and now your protein will have that particular tail so you can see the steel region is the histidine tag now after you do you do the cell lysis of the bacterial cells what you're going to have is the mixture of the protein molecules and those protein molecules they will have some of the proteins that are recombinant proteins they will have uh, the histidine tagged and other proteins will not have that particular histidine uh, tail in it so you can use that particular principle and bind that particular protein to the nickel slurry and uh, if you flow through to this apparatus which is right now i'm making is a is a column in green in color now you're flowing the protein mixture only the protein with the histidine tag will bind now protein will bind to the slurry and all the other proteins they will just flow through now you can discard the flow through next your protein is bound you need to disturb that interaction after flowing through your supernatant supernatant in mixture is the basically what you get after centrifugation of the bacterial cell lysate and what you do is you add imidazole at a specific concentration and then elute your protein of interest and that will be your pure protein so this is the flow chart of the basic 
experimental layout that how you use histidine tag, how you use the nickel slurry to purify the protein. And there are specific conditions that you can use. First condition is when you're going to use his tag is the uh, requirement of a small tag. If you need a small tag in your protein and you don't want function of the protein to get interfered, you can use this particular tag. Next is to maintain the normal cell physiology. If you use longer tags like GST, it might affect the cell physiology. So you need a smaller tag, you can use this. Another important aspect of this particular tag is the low cost. This particular system is available. You can uh, basically have a basic molecular biology lab and you can start purifying your own protein so low cost and large scale production since the cost is low you can produce this particular purified protein in large amount and then you can study protein protein interaction using this tag you can uh, you also do protein dna interaction how you're going to do that depends upon the experiments you want to perform see if you are doing this and then nickel uh, is uh, binding with your protein in the column and now if you want to see the interaction so what you can do is basically flow through the protein of interest so just imagine uh, in this case your your column column has the protein which is histidine tag now it is tagged to the uh, specific reason now if you flow through the protein that you are thinking is going to bind it is if it has that interaction, protein-protein interaction, what will happen? That protein is going to stay in the column without the histidine tag because it is interacting with the protein. So that is how you can, uh, you know, then you quantify in the flow through if the protein is there, that means it's not binding. If protein is in the column, then, then, then you can say it is binding to the uh, resin. So this is how you can understand protein-protein interaction using the column, using the slurry, using the purified protein. And uh, in this in this video, I've tried to show you what are the different aspects of the histidine tag. So if I just revise everything what we have discussed is in this video, we try to, you know, first started with the histidine tag. What is histidine tag, which is nothing but a 6 to 12 amino acid sequence, depending upon how much uh, usually it is 6, right? Depending upon your experimental requirement, you can change the number of amino acids that you want to use in the histidine. Uh, next, how it works is by binding to the nickel uh, ions. How you do the elution, imidazole. And then you can, I have discussed that you can use C terminus or the N terminus. We have discussed the bacterial system. We have discussed the uh, overall flow chart of the experiments that how you uh, purify the protein from the mixture of the protein. Finally, what are the conditions that you use when you use the histidine tag? Means uh, if you want to have the protein in large amount and your cost, your budget is as a limiting factor, you can use this particular tag. And I, I would recommend using this particular tag if you are purifying the protein for the first time. This is, uh, with my experience, I know that histidine tag works nice, specifically with the proteins that are soluble. So protein, if the protein is more hydrophilic, you can definitely should use this particular tag. And if the protein is uh, also, you want a protein where there is there is no interference with the uh, with the function of the protein with the tag. You can use this particular tag. And uh, then another thing, if you want to understand the interaction that we have also discussed, you can use this tag. I can make futuristic, uh, you know, some of the videos on uh, future aspects of the function of the using histidine tag. For example, how you understand the protein protein or the protein DNA interaction. So I hope that this video was helpful for you to understand the histidine tag in general and uh, we have discussed some of the important aspects and I'll cover other kinds of tags. You have uh, monoclonal antibody tag, you have GST tag, what are those tags? So please stay tuned and watch all those videos and try to understand all those uh, topics. If you if you are able to understand the topic, that will be, uh, you know, I would say I'm able to convey the message to you all. and. If, if you want to appreciate that, you can also comment and you can uh, you can also share this video with your friends. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And I'll see you in my next video.